YouTube channel. My name is Cassie, also known as Knittycast. This is my YouTube channel where I talk about the projects that I'm making, some patterns that I'm drooling over, books I'm reading, things happening on my small farm in Vermont, and a spice of mental health. So go ahead and grab your favorite beverage. I of course have Pepsi. I usually say this is equivalent of my morning coffee, but since I drink it all day and uh, Let's just be honest, this is my life source. So grab your favorite beverage and a project that you're working on and join me as we chat. This might be a little chatty. I have not done a traditional podcast since September. I did do Vlogtober, so if you hadn't had a chance to go see it, you can go ahead and check out my Vlogtober videos. I posted, if not daily, every couple of days. So I went to a wedding went to my sister's house and had a nice visit there for about a week, uh, did some pumpkin carving, and of course celebrated Halloween. I will be participating in Vlogmas. I have figured out how to edit on my phone, so I won't have to wait for my phone to kind of upload and sync to my tablet where I do my editing. I have mastered the ability to record and edit shorter videos on my phone. So I will be doing Vlogmas without any technical glitches. Uh, knock on wood, there's a table here. So that's pretty exciting. I hope that you join me on Vlogmas. I do have a couple advents. I will talk about that later in the acquisitions section. So I figured I would sneak in one podcast and kind of really do the recap of the things that I've finished, the things that I'm working on, and really do all the chatty stuff that you can't really do in a short little vlog. Today is Sunday, November 19th. Yeah, it's almost Thanksgiving here in the US. So this week is gonna be full of um, hurry up, hurry up, make a big feast, be really lethargic and tired for a little bit, and then carry on with normalcy. By the time I get back to normal, it'll be time for Vlogmas. <clears throat> so, since the last time that you have seen me, I have finished three items. I have finished my Rhinebeck sweater. This is the Autumn Court sweater by Dragon Horde Yarn. So this is the sweater in all its glory. The color work was a little snug on the sleeves, but not snug enough where it was uncomfortable. And I finished the body and one whole sleeve while I was at my sister's house. And I didn't bring my second skein or my spare skein of yarn. So the week that I went to my sister's house was the week like immediately before Rhinebeck. And so I called my husband and I was like, um, I need that yarn. And in order to finish my sweater on time, I like need it yesterday. So like a good sport, he was able to find the yarn. He sent it priority mail and it got there two days before I had to leave. So I had just enough time to hurry up and get it ready to go. I had to wind it by hand and then I was knitting and I did finish my sweater. I think it was the day before I left my sister's, which is a couple days before Rhinebeck. So just to recap, this is the Autumn Court sweater and this red is called Northern Cardinal by O Wool. This blue is Serial Mermaid and that is by Dragon Horde Yarn. This orange is also by Dragon Horde Yarn. This is her slutty pumpkin colorway. This kind of um, peachy neutral color, I don't know the name of it, but it's also by O Wool, the company of the red. And I knit a size, well I think she does it by bust size, so I was like the six size in the parentheses. And before I blocked it, it fit absolutely perfect first time I made a sweater that fit exactly the way I wanted it. Tried it on, completely in love. But then, in typical Cassie fashion, 
some kind of hiccup has to happen, right? So I didn't have time to wet block it. I got home late Thursday night, like around midnight, and we were leaving Saturday morning. So I didn't have time to wet block it, it wouldn't dry. So I thought I'd steam block it. And the color work in the yoke, which we've been talking about, if you've been following along, was really, really tight. <laughs> so while I was steam blocking it, I was really kind of stretching that part out, not really thinking it through. And I tried on my sweater the next day and it just felt really stretched out and frumpy. Um, the body was a little bit bigger than I wanted and the neck was wicked stretched out. Like, um, so I was feeling a little defeated and I didn't want to cry. And so I went to Rhinebeck with my friend Salila and she was a lifesaver. She had a scarf, scarf slash shawl, shawl, um, with her and I was able to use that and kind of tie it around my neck so it wouldn't look as drastic and it made me feel a lot more comfortable. But I did get a chance to wear it on Rhinebeck. I did run into Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn and uh, got a picture with her wearing her sweater and that meant the world to me. Uh, I'm a huge fan of hers. So I picked a lot of friends' brains there at Rhinebeck like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I love this sweater but I want it to fit the way that it used to fit and I especially want to fix the neck. So um, some people said I could take a crochet hook and kind of pull it in with that. I could use some elastic, but people who brought that up also said that wouldn't really be like the first or ideal choice. I could take the whole neck out and knit it again. I could try and reblock it. So I think what I've settled on is taking the neck out re the neck, kind of making it smaller than what it says to be. Or actually, I'll probably, I'll probably knit it the way it says. And then when I wet block it, I'm going to try to make it so it cinches in. I might use the dryer a little bit. I don't know. That'll be a last case scenario. Um, so yeah, I'm going to knit the neck band again and wet block it and really try to hope that it cinches up. When I do... Uh, when I wash my socks, like when I hand wash my socks and let them dry, they do tighten back up. So I'm hoping the same kind of thing will happen. But I am pretty mad at my sweater and it's almost, you know, Christmas knitting. So it's going to be a little while before I fix it. But I am really excited that I finally finished it. And ideally it will be a sweater that fits me if I can fix it. Oh, I wish I hadn't blocked it. I wish I had worn it at Rhinebeck with it kind of scrunchy at the top because the rest of it was perfect. Now I know. And the second finished object that I have is a pair of vanilla socks for my niece, Olivia. This is a simple vanilla pair of socks with the Desert Vista Dye Works colorway Bewitched. I was making them for myself and I was knitting at a soccer game and my niece was like, oh, I really like those. You're knitting them for me, right? Knowing full well I wasn't knitting them for her, but if she said that I probably would consider knitting them for her. So of course in that moment they became Olivia's socks and I have not gifted them to her yet. I want to block them first. I did also technically finish a hat. This is the Daniels hat. It is a simple brioche pattern. It's written for single color brioche, but brioche is much easier with two colors. You can kind of tell if you're on a knit row or a purl row. So I had two different colors, beautiful yarn. Do I have the yarn handy? So it was knit out of this ball of yarn, it's showing up a little brighter on the camera. So I've got this one and then this one, I've just got some, some really bright pink and some muted grays. They don't look like they go together like this, but in the hat, they were gorgeous. So I had started knitting this hat quite a while ago and I was reorganizing some whips. I found the hat and I thought, wow. I think I'm just about at the crown decreases. I should probably finish this. 
And so Natalie has joined together with Julianne of Twin Stitches Designs and with the Love and Stitches membership and Twin Stitches Designs or Julianne's membership, they have decided to make a like whip wrap up, I think it's called. So finishing things in the month in the month of November and this hat was on my list. So last weekend I worked really hard on it. I had no idea how to do a brioche decrease, which was the only thing preventing me from finishing this hat in the past. I sat down, I watched video by, I think it was Very Pink Knits. I watch a lot of her tutorials. Very Pink Knits, figured out how to do the decreases, the left leaning and the right leaning, and I picked it up really quickly actually. Uh, at first I did have to watch the video over and over, and then in my brain it kind of clicked how the stitches were playing together so it became a little more it became almost intuitive because I was like oh okay I want it to do this this is how I do it so on the tutorial have however she said you know I am getting to the place where I want to do my brioche decrease and I just finished I think it was a pearl with like a yarn over so there'd be a stitch and a yarn over and then the decrease and for some reason I thought oh I must have to have that stitch in between <laughs> oh sometimes I make things so complicated so I did that finish the hat super excited the decreases made like this really nice kind of pointy crown and they were kind of going next to each other, you know, so I had like four pointy crowns, so beautiful. But in between the crowns, I had like this weird fold, like almost like a, it almost looked like origami, like it could tuck in. And I'm sure if I wore it, it would probably be okay, but it was really funky. And I was like, oh my God, what the hell did I just do? So... I realized obviously that that didn't need to be there because without that extra stitch the crowns would just really complement each other and so moving forward I know that I don't need to do that so in the moment I thought you know what I'm pretty good at frogging back and catching my stitches I will just frog back to the beginning of where I started the crown decreases like how hard could that be <laughs> sometimes there's like two people in my brain the one that's like oh I'm magical and can do anything and like being all like glass completely full not half full completely full and then all of a sudden the other piece of me like the realist who experiences that it's not accurate is kind of like really Hassie you thought you could do that that's kind of what happened so I ripped back and I don't know if you've ever ripped back brioche. Like, I'm sure there's people who have knit brioche for a long time who can knit back, no problem. I've never tanked brioche. So I frogged back and then I tried to catch, you know, my stitches and I tried to catch the flows between. It was a hot mess. I couldn't do it. I will admit I cried. And then the hat was just just garbage at that point I couldn't knit it anymore I will knit another hat in the future another brioche hat in the future I know how to do it I know how to do the decreases now but I'm super bummed I will put a photo in here if I have a photo of it finished I'll put that in here I know I have a photo of me like frogging it um, so I will put that in here if I can't find a finished one just so you can see how pretty the colors together okay that brings me to my whips so every year I knit a hat for my husband's birthday he loves 100% wool hats and wants a new one every year no problem so I bought this yarn it's brown 100% wool it's kind of like scratchy wool but not uncomfortable scratchy wool and I tried knitting with it I realized it was too thin so I started holding it double but because the wool was so toothy, it was really hard to work with. Even when I went up a size of the needle, I even went down a size of the needle. I couldn't do it. And then 
well, before I gave up with the needles. So first, let me back up. <laughs> I got the yarn. My husband has a large head. And when I say large head, I don't mean like a traditional large head. Like he has a weird, oddly shaped, ginormous head. It's crazy. So in the past, I've knit him hats that have been too small. So for some reason, I think I made up a number and I cast it on. And I knit like four inches of this hat and it was way too big. He tried it on and it just went Poof. And I was like, oh my God. So I ripped it back and I started over. And that's when the yarn was like too toothy and I couldn't get it to move and I just got really, really frustrated. And I had tried the different needle sizes. So I'd like gone up a size, I'd gone down a size. I think I started this hat four times with that yarn. And I finally I was like, enough is enough. I put the hat aside, like I frogged it back, I put the yarn aside and I was like, oh my God, I don't know if he's gonna have a hat for his birthday. But last year I was gifted some wool from my sister and I don't have the band with me, but if I find the second skein, I'll put it down below. So it's got this really nice gray. It's not tweedy, but it does kind of have like variants in it. So we've got this kind of gray. It's 100% wool. It's not toothy at all, but it's you can tell it's wool. And I started this on Tuesday, and I'm at the crown decreases. Also, I measured his head. So I measured the crown measurements and I measured from his ear to about here, knowing that I could like knit to here and start the decreases. So, you know, all the things I probably should have done in the beginning. And kudos to me, I wrote it down in my knitting notebook. Measurements for Chris's hat, cast on with DK yarn, cast it on X, Y, and Z stitches, which was 128. Knit it for like a little over seven inches, not quite seven and a half before starting the crown decreases. So next year, I don't have to do any of this crap and I can get it done. So he goes to work tomorrow and this hat will be done probably before dinner tonight. Woohoo! And it's got this really cute stitch marker. This is a truffle. Oops. And it's got a bite taken out of it. How cute is that? This is by we ones and she makes polymer clay uh, stitch markers and it's in this really cute bag with a peekaboo this is by mid mitten designs I don't know if you can see mid mitten designs super cute whoa that was loud and this one I've been working on for a while. You'll recognize this one if you've been hanging out with me. This is the Campside Cardi by Alicia Plummer. So it's gonna be kind of weird to see. This is gonna be where the sleeve is. I'm currently knitting. How do I do this? <laughs> I'm currently knitting the neck and button band. I'm not going to have buttons on it, but it's the neck and button band. So it's kind of scrunched up like this. And I finished the body and this is the bottom ribbing. So I'm really, really enjoying the way it's playing. I thought these two colors would play better together. I didn't think they'd be as much of a contrast, but I'm kind of liking it. Like it's going to be, um, I don't know what the word is. Like the words that come to mind are like uh, grandpa sweaters or like rustic sweaters, but none of that really gets what I'm trying to say, but I'm going to love it. A cozy, homey sweater, something like that. This is knit with a yarn called Pennies from Heaven by Little Fox and some mohair, which I no longer have the ball band for. This is the yarn all by itself. It's getting a little blown out. And then the mohair. 
is this really cute colorway and together it makes this it's kind of like a shimmery mermaid scale I like it then this is for the ribbing and the button band and it'll be the ribbing for the sleeves this is called peacock blue and this is by Fiber Stash Dye Works, a local Vermont yarn dyer. And I was hoping to have this done by the end of the month for that whoop wrap up, but I'm not going to, which is fine. In trying to finish it this month, I have gotten a lot done. So it's definitely getting me motivated. And if I don't finish it, I'm still going to be happy that it's getting lots of progress. And it's in this really big bag with peekaboo that I got at Rhinebeck last year. And it is Tika Bags. I'm also working on a washcloth. My goal was to do 12 washcloths this year. When I finish this one, it'll be washcloth number six. So definitely not going to finish it unless I go on a washcloth knitting mojo for Christmas which I might. So I'm using, I think it's grandmother's favorite dish cloth and it's basically knit like a corner to corner. So I'm already on the decreased pieces and it's with some sort of colorway from Dishy. And it's in this really cute hobo bag that I got from Ryan back this year with monarchs which are my absolute favorite animal and it is from wee ones her little booth the one who made that truffle stitch marker her mom makes uh, knitting bags so she was selling them in the same booth but there was no separate business card for her mom all right my other whip Katrina I know you're watching this and I'm making you something that I don't want you to know about. So I want you to skip ahead three minutes. That way you definitely are covered that you're not going to see this. So go ahead and do that now. I'll give you a couple seconds. <clears throat> okay. While I was visiting my sister, a pair of the socks that I had made her a while ago got eaten by her dog. And I'm making her... A replacement with some yarn that I got at Rhinebeck that just screamed out that they were that the yarn was just determined to be for my sister so this is the spider socks that's the spider it's got this cute little left and right twist in the back I think it's just right twist actually isn't the yarn just beautiful and if you don't know my sister Love spiders. I'm afraid of them. I hate them. I will squish them. She will save them. She gets mad at me. She will save them. So sock one is done. I got the ribbing of sock two and I'd like to mail them out in a Christmas package for her. That is it for whips. So now I'm going to go to acquisitions. This is not usually a part of my podcast that's like very big but this time it will be. Let's see. So I got my November Yarnable. And I'll show you the yarn first. So on the camera it's showing up purple, but it's really like a gingerbready kind of brown. Hmm. Kind of like this in this angle here and it is called sinful delight and it was kind of like a cinnamon themed package so sinful delight it's on her plush sock 8515 and because of some of the goodies it smells so good but I can't wait to knit this up and the goodies this month were also really cool so there is some cinnamon spice soap. This is by Little House on the Homestead. It's farm made artisan soap. 
and it smells delightful. Mm. And then there's this cinnamon swirl candle by Angela Rose Studios. It says it has notes of vanilla, cinnamon, and sugar. Hand poured in Richland Center shape. Mmm. Mmm. Smells like a cinnamon bun. So good. And these little knitting tags that you can sew in. It's got a sheep and made with love. And then the Love and Stitches membership did a special colorway with Addie of Ruby and Roses. And I ordered two skeins of the special colorway. It is called Love and Roses. And it is this gorgeous color. It's like a, a teal base with so many gorgeous colors in it. I can't wait to knit it up. So I've got two of those. I think they're the same base. Soft rose. Yes, soft rose. So 85 superwash merino, 15% nylon. And then, of course, I had to buy other things. So there was this one that doesn't have a ball band because my puppy is a jerk and ate my yarn. So ate the ball band off of this one. And that's super pretty. And then this one, it's gonna be fun to play with. I think this one is called Paintbrush. Um, very pretty. And my dog also thought it was very pretty apparently and tried to play with it. And she ate an entire skein. Like obviously she didn't like eat and digest it, but she made it not savable at all. So that's disappointing. And then this one is called Hermione. And I couldn't resist because of all the pinks and I just love Hermione from Harry Potter. She also sent me a mini. Which I don't know where it is. And then from Rhinebeck I've got this bag from the mother of the wee ones. I've got this yarn, which the ball is on the other side of the room. So this yarn, it's got a lot of blues and purples in it. It's super pretty. It's from Into the World and it's spelled W-H-I-R-L-E-D, which I thought was pretty clever. And it's just really it's not super soft and it's not rustic. It's like the perfect in between. So I think it's gonna be a pretty sturdy sock. And I've got this yarn. This is from Road Trip Yarn. She travels and she also dyes yarn. And so her booth was really cute and it had like suitcases of yarn. She also dyes yarn in honor of some rescue cats. And so this is the picture of the cat that this yarn was inspired by. The cat's name is Nutmeg. And Nutmeg is a torty cat. My cat Shadow is a torty cat. So I thought it would be really fun to use this yarn. And her yarn is so soft. It's like butter. It's 85 Superwash Merino, 15% nylon, but it is it is so soft. And I've got two. Is that the same? No. <laughs> yes. Two of these because I am a single skein queen and then I'm like, what am I going to do with all these single skeins? So I got two of them. This is by Bumblebee Acres. I have a problem with Bumblebee Acres. I love their yarn. I like to knit with it. I like their colorways. I like the colorway names that they come up with. I was going to avoid their booth like the plague because I was trying to be on a better budget this year. <sighs> One of my friends wanted to check it out. And so like, how could I not, right? Like I had to go check it out. I got some yarn, <laughs> but this colorway spoke to me. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And it's Brianna and it's, uh, Outlander inspired. It's on their bubble sock, 80% superwash, 20% silk, super soft. And it also has like these really, it's really bright, but it's also kind of like fall. So 
So I might, I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but I might use it next fall. Maybe I'll save it for like a fall project. Who knows? Then I've got this one. And I I love pinks and blues, but I also love oranges. So the orange really spoke to me in this one. This is called Lucian, Lord of Foxes, which is inspired by A Court of Thorns and Roses. And it is on their squishy sock, which is 75% superwash and 25% 25% nylon and it's showing pretty true to color. It's really pretty. And then this one because pink, so many pinks. This is called the fuchsia, the fuchsia fairy. And let's see, it is from their inspired by flower fairies on their squishy sock. 75 super wash, 25% nylon. Super, super cute. There's a little more pinks on this side. It's getting kind of washed out. It's a light pink, but it's not whitish. Like it's looking in the light. And then this one, so gorgeous. Kind of similar to the Love and Roses um, sock yarn. This is Just Sweet Pre and it is Outliner inspired collection on their squishy sock, of course. 75% superwash, 25% nylon. And then I got some, what are they called? Barber cords? I think they're called barber cords. They're for putting in your projects so you can try them on. So I got some of those, but I'm confused. Comment below, I'm very confused. So I thought the barber cords would have stoppers on them, but they don't and they're kind of got a hollow end. So how do I use these? <laughs> like, I've never used them before. So do I have to put a stopper in it? Does it attach to my needle that I'm already using? Help. Um, let's see. I got a bunch of stitch markers too. I've got from Wee Ones, I got candy corn. So it's like three candy corn and one pumpkin. She tends to do sets of four with one being the odd man out. There's a set of those four truffles. One of the truffles is a square. There's sharks. One of the shark is a hammerhead. And then from the road trip yarns, the one with the cat inspired yarn, I had a tin of little cat uh, stitch markers. I'm pretty sure I have a picture of them in my hand, so I will add the picture here. And I also got, oh, didn't want to leave it too long. I didn't think it's a surprise to see the colors because you're going to be surprised at how you knit it up. But this is the Cozy Knitter 24 Stripe Advent Socks. It is enough to knit two pairs of socks. So my friend Michaela and I split it last year and we split it again this year. It comes in two individually um, wound skeins. So I'm mailing her a skein and this is my skein here. It's going to be Advents for Christmas. Then I also have another Advent here. My friend Deborah and I did a scrap swap. So we sent, I think it was 10, yeah, 10 grams, 12, 12 10 gram minis. And hers are like in these really cute like packages with the numbers really fun so I've got my 12 in here that will be super fun to open and then this one is from Adore Knits I've got the full package so it has the stitch marker progress keepers the project bag which um, the note inside said that we can't show it till the 25th so I won't show you the project bag but I will be using it before the 25th um, and it also comes with goodies. So there was this cute letter inside. Oh, I got it upside down. And there's also going to be a full skein of yarn. Aww. To open up by Christmas. So, that's pretty exciting. And I'm just waiting for my advent to ship from Yarn Cafe Creations. I got her Disney princess yarn and I chose Belle as my princess. Okay, so I don't 
really have like patterns I'm drooling over to talk about because my favorite list and the patterns I'm drooling over is so long and a lot of them right now are kind of thinking what to do with my minis and I'm just overwhelmed with all the possibilities so I didn't feel like spending a whole lot of time sharing them here uh, so that brings me to books so I have been listening to from blood and ash Blood and Ash. From Ash and Blood. Why can't I remember it? I'm going to put it down below. I know it's by Jennifer Armentrout and really enjoying it, listening to it on audio, on audiobook. So I don't really get a lot of time to listen to it because for some reason, when I sit down to knit, I forget that I can listen to a book. Uh, so I've been doing it mostly on my commute to work, which isn't really that far away. I also read Woman in Cabin 10, I think it's by Ruth Ware, and I've heard some mixed reviews, mostly reviews that people didn't enjoy it, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't sleuth it out, I didn't expect the ending, so um, I thought it was a pretty great read. I'm kind of reading A Day of Fallen Night, this is by, I don't remember, I'll put it down below. This is the sequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree, and that book is like yay big, and this one is like yay big, um, and the characters, at least right now, are not the same characters. It almost seems like it might be a prequel, but I can't quite figure it out. So I actually have had to do a diagram where I'm like, this person had a baby with this person, this is said baby whose role is X, Y, and Z and lives in this kingdom. This is like four kingdoms. Uh, I think that's discouraging me a little bit from reading, mostly because I'm reading it in spurts and then going back to it and I have to like reorient myself. And by the time I reorient myself, I don't have a lot of time to read. I am hoping maybe after the holidays when things settle down, I can really make that my priority reading. And it's one of those things where if you're reading it um, frequently and consistently you don't have to look back at your notes as much. I also just finished Bella Donna. I'll put the author down below. Uh, this has been on my to be read this has been on my to be read list for a really really long time and I found it at my local library. They even have the sequel so I'm hoping to go to the library this week and go and get the sequel. Really enjoyed it. So in terms of farm life we just got my ram back. We pimped him out to another farm so that they could breed their sheep. He was gone for about a month. We just got him back about a week ago. He's in two week quarantine just to make sure he didn't bring back any illnesses from another farm. And he is some ticked off. <laughs> We've had to reinforce his pen. And because the other sheep are outside and he could see them in the window, he actually like rammed the window and broke it. Um, this sheep is a sweetheart, but can be a jerk. And he's kind of a jerk because I think he's like really into the ladies and he couldn't get at them. So hopefully next week when he can be with his partner, our weather, whose name is Bob, or it's actually Bab, but once they can get together, I think he will be a happier sheep. And I'm hoping that he did his job and that the other farm will have cute little babies in a few months. So we will see. And the rest of the sheep are healthy. My runt that we kept, Bama Lamb, she's our black sheep. She is still a runt. There's nothing wrong with her. The vets checked her out. Um, she's eating, she's drinking, she's peeing, she's pooping. She's got energy, she's playing with them. She was sickly for a little while. And I think she had worms and we treated the worms and we treated her anemia, whatever. So she's been good for a while and she's even like playful and active, but she's so small still like she's not really like growing in height it's weird but the vet says nothing's wrong I'm kind of thinking with humans if there's not enough room in the uterus to grow they're diagnosed with like interuterine growth restriction and sometimes that means the baby will be on the smaller side for quite a while and I almost think that because she was number four and she was so tiny that she might just be a tiny sheep um, the rest of the sheep are doing good. 
we when we bought chickens in April ish we bought chickens and my mother-in-law bought two turkeys and two ducks the two ducks went to my niece Lydia's house one duck we think got eaten and so they brought the other duck into the barn and the duck's been doing quite well it's really smart it's gotten out a couple different times so we have that in the barn um, the chickens are doing good they're laying pretty well they haven't slowed down their laying yet we have one black chicken who is super smart and gets out of her pen every night despite patching all the little tiny holes we find and there's actually this old um, it's like an old dog crate but it's really small and I'd used it as a creep feeder when my lambs were little and it still has some hay in it and so she actually gets out and lays eggs in there so you have to be really like mindful to look for eggs she lays like three eggs a day which is pretty crazy let's see we just killed the male turkey we're having him for Thanksgiving he weighed in a little over 40 pounds so that's pretty cool our bunnies are like not bunnies anymore and let's see that's about it for farm life in terms of family life the Christmas bug has hit me I usually don't watch Christmas movies before Thanksgiving I'm not allowed to set up well, I made a promise to my husband, it's not like I'm not allowed, that I don't set up for Christmas until the day after Thanksgiving. And usually that's when I start listening to the music and start watching the movies, but I don't know, for like the last week or so, I've been into all the Christmas movies. And like wanting to Christmas shop like crazy. <laughs> um, the older two, their basketball will start up soon. What else? I feel like there was other stuff I had to tell you. Oh, my 15 year old Wyatt got a really nice deer this season. And so I'll put in a couple pictures of that too. Super proud of him. It's his first deer ever. He got it on the last day of youth weekend. I just want to take a moment to say thank you all to my subscribers for continuing to come back for liking my videos and commenting on my videos I really enjoy interacting with you thank you so much for your support I've also noticed that I have a lot of new followers and subscribers so I just want to say welcome and thank you so much for subscribing to me I will be doing a giveaway on this video so um, I'm not sure what it's for. It'll be a first skein of yarn. I just haven't picked it out yet. It'll be a new skein of yarn that I haven't used yet. Um, and so the prompt, the prompt, which is it? Okay, so the prompt should be, what is your favorite holiday tradition? And it can be any holiday. Um, it can be Thanksgiving, it can be Christmas, it can be Hanukkah. It could be Easter, it could be uh, Valentine's Day, it could be a holiday that I haven't listed that's important to you. So if you want to be part of the giveaway, comment below what your favorite holiday tradition is. Now this brings me to my favorite segment. This is the spice of mental health. I am a big advocate of mental health and I think it's really important to make sure that we take time to take care of ourselves. And so for this week, I want to say that we need to remind ourselves that not all thoughts are true. Meaning that thoughts of self-doubt, thoughts of people, you know, people think X, Y, and Z about me. If I don't do this, then this will happen. Not all thoughts are true. So when you kind of get in that loop, maybe kind of question yourself a little bit like, is that really true? Is that really accurate? Or is it just me um, being nervous about that being the truth? And sometimes when we can kind of take a minute and question, like, you know, that was a really uncomfortable thought, thoughts are not always true, maybe it'll lessen the sting and lessen the frequency of the thought. So go ahead and give that a try the next time you're kind of in a negative loop or you're thinking negatively about something, take a moment and remind yourself that not all thoughts are true. So I won't see you next until Vlogmas and I hope that you all have a happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate it and enjoy a lot of crafting.
and I will see you soon. Bye.